of the words in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us on citation with liberty, and we will Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thy kingdom, power, and glory, friend. Perestos Jesus ben shos Il logisos Epi prosefki estasite Epi prosefki Mar incipe motin tot merer vet nevun na intim not viotim chois Ob not yoven sotiris os vechestos Jafris ke pause ne gon ver voice ne eron avarieron af shop ten ero fafti aso eron afti to ten fent in shariata ayuno thai em to fun mar in tero fobos ne varieron am pai o eth wa fine ne tiron tebenon khenirin ni venenje ont krator Choice penoti, rose fixaste, choice rose want crator. If you ben choice open, not you open so tear, so sos We thank you for everything concerning everything and in everything. For you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to yourself, spared us, supported us, and have brought us to this hour. Pray that God have mercy and compassion on us. Hear us, help us, accept the supplication and prayer of his sins for that which is good in our behalf at all times and forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. Therefore, we ask and entreat your goodness, lover of mankind, grant us complete this holy day and all days of our life in all peace with your fear. All envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of the wicked men and the rising up of enemies hidden and manifest, take them away from us and from all your people and from this holy church and from this holy place. Those things which are good and profitable do provide for us, for it is you have given us the authority to trown serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy. Choice is us better, Shere nagmi ma, 
The Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, we ask and entreat your goodness, Lord, of mankind. Remember, Lord, our fathers and brethren who have fallen asleep. Remember, Lord, your servants who have fallen asleep. Our fathers and our brethren. Lord, pray for our father and our brethren who have fallen asleep and repose in the face of Christ in the beginning. Our Holy Father, the Archbishops, our Father, the Bishops, our Father, the Higgins, our Father, the Priest, our Brethren, the Deacons, our Father, the Monk, and our Father, the Lemans, and for the for repose of Christian, that Christ our God may repose their souls in the paradise of joy, and we to accord mercy unto us and forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. Praise the Lord, repose all their souls in the bosom of our Holy Fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Stain them in a green pasture beside still waters in the paradise of joy. The place out of its grief, sorrow, and groaning up fled away in the light of your saints. Raise up their bodies also on the, which, on the day which you have appointed, according to your true promise, which, which are without lie. Grant them the good things that, that which your promise has, that which an eye has not seen nor ear heard. And there will come upon the heart of man the things which you, O God, have prepared for those who love your holy name. For there is no death for your servants but a departure. And even if any negligence or heedlessness has overtaken them as men, since they were clothed in flesh and dwelt in this world, O God is a good one of over mankind. Grace the court of those, the Lord, to repose and forgive them your orthodox servants who are in the whole world, from the east to the west, from the north to the south, each one according to his name, each one according to her name. For no one is pure and without blemish, even though his life on earth be a single day. As for those, O oh Lord, whose souls you have taken, repose them, and may they be worthy of the kingdom of the heavens. As for us all, grant us our Christian perfection that would be pleasing to you, and give them and us a shared inheritance with all your saints. Lord, have mercy. Let us praise you to the Lord, Lord, keep us now without sin. Bless you, O Lord, God of the Father, who seen blessed and glorified be your name for every man. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according to our hope in you, and for the eyes of everyone, wait upon you, for you giving the fruit in due season. Hear us, O God, our Savior, the hope of all regions of the earth, and you, O Lord, keep us safe from this generation forever. Amen. Bless you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Bless you, O Lord, make me understand your commandments. Bless you, O Lord, and let me through righteousness. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever, despise not, O Lord, the works of your hands. You've been my rest from generation to generation. I ask the Lord and set out mercy on me, who my soul for I have sinned against you. Lord, I fled unto you. Save me and teach me to do your will. For you are my God, and to you is the fountain of life. In your life shall we see light. Let your mercy come unto those who know your righteousness, so upright in heart. 
To you belongs blessings, to you belongs praise, to you belongs glory, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, existing from the beginning, now, forever, and ever, and amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and sing praise unto your name, O Most High, show forth your mercy every morning, your righteousness every night. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mother, was born of the Virgin of Mercy upon us. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mother, is crucified for our first and mercy upon us. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mother, was the dead son of time, mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now for him, sage, Father, Amen. Amen. Holy Trinity, respond us. 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 Holy Trinity, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on their sin. Give to them the presentation of their sin. Let us all see the presentation of their sin. Let us all see the presentation of their sin. Let us all see the presentation of their sin. Let us all see the presentation of their sin. Let us all see the presentation of their sin. Ti bardi nos Maria, ti do to costo a ti pronti prostati se te noten te vigel sente ti me tromi. Cereneo, neo ti par te nos ti. to him and sent him to paradise. Likewise, I the sinner, Jesus, my true King and God, have compassion upon me and make me as one of them. This is so ungentle, go out of thoughts and a revision, eat all and night. Ari pam evi chem fekna ishayen tepien. I ask you, O my Lord Jesus, do not chastise me with your anger, nor also with your wrath. Do not chastise my ignorance. 
Jeko shem mu ana pire fenovi me meritin tek foto on te fon shana athi kenta amet go bem per som sero e khenom von. Tetsi o eroko peso tira mare ne kuethna ita ho yen tono em em mo ekhniana ki eti o ve tapsi ki. Allah Pasha is a rio in me, a memerit in Niramni Nevi Nayet of Ermetani on a cano no vino evon. Ed me fight it over mock up shoy seven oti pasoti emperi reno abni me ano kapi govne frovi. Shopin tho ere som se gon l'khenni me tsho si t'arif en khi to vot en shoy se nev t'i ren t'i dhe o to ko se to yem par thin o sen se yon i men. Shere o ti parthen o si uro em mina li thini Shere pshu shunte pengen o sari eg funan in emmanuin We exalt you, Mother of True Light. We glorify you, Saint the Theotokos, for you brought her forth unto us, Savior of the world, came in service to us. Glory be to your Master, O Lord, King Christ. Pride of the Apostles, crown of the martyrs, the joy of the righteous, the firmness of the church, forgiveness of our sins. We believe in the Holy Trinity, one of Godhead. We worship and glorify Him, Lord, have mercy, Lord, mercy, Lord, bless you, Amen. We believe in one God, God the Father, the Pontus Creator, Creator of heaven and earth, and all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father for all ages. Light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of oneness of the Father, by whom all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down for him and was carnal, the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary and became men. He was crucified for us and upon his body, suffering, was buried in the third day, rose from the dead according to the scriptures. Sent him to heaven, sits at the right hand of his father. He's coming again, his glory, judging the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. He has in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the life giver, proceeding for the Father, with the Father, Son, and Son, and glorified. He spoke by the prophets, one holy Catholic, star church. We confess and baptism of of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. Amen.
and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them, to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. But as for you, blessed are your eyes for they see and ears for they hear. May we be worthy to your intact according to holy gospel through the prayers of your saints. Pray concerning the holy gospel. Lord have mercy. Remember also our master, all those who have been in us, to remember them in our supplications and prayers, which we offer up unto you, O Lord our God. Those who have already fallen asleep, propose them. Those who are sick, heal them. For you are the life of us all, the salvation of us all, the hope of us all, the healing of us all, and the resurrection of us all. Listen to the Holy Gospel, reading from the Gospel according to our teacher, St. Mark, may his blessing be with us all. From the Psalms of our Father David the Prophet and the King, may his lessons be with us all. Amen. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Is Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, our Lord God, Savior, King of us all, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, to us all glory forever. Amen. Immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness forty days. Tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. 
Repent and believe in the gospel. Our Father who art in heaven, how be thy name, thy kingdom come, thou will be done. Earth is in heaven, give us this there daily bread and forgive us our trespasses for you, those trespassing and sins, and leave us not to but live soon, cast yourself to ask your God, friend. Let us all see us in choice. Ask you follow Simon to create a clean out Ros homin se ho meta vu vu amin. Here in the O Master, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, looks of God the Father, has broken every bond of our sins through saving, life-giving sufferings. We read in the face of his saint, the disciples, the holy apostles, let them receive the Holy Spirit. Forgive the sins of any there, forgive and retain the sins of any there retained. Now also our Master, you have given grace to your holy apostles, those for a time labor in the priesthood and holy church, and forgives them upon the earth, to bind and loose every bond of iniquity. And also ask and treat of mankind for your servants, my fathers, and my brethren, and my weakness. Those about the heads before your holy glory, dispense to us your mercy and loose every bond of our sins. And if we have committed any sin against you, knowing we are knowingly throwing you apart, whether indeed a word or faint heart, as a master knows the weakness of men, it's going to lower mankind. O God, grant us our sins. Bless us, purify us, absolve us, and all your people. Fill us with your fear and strain us for your holy good will. For you are God, the glory, the honor, and dominion, and worship are due unto you. With him and the Holy Spirit, the life giver, who is the best in all attempts to eat your fallen spirit. In Kiriala, Eson, Kiriala, Eson, Kiriala, Eson, Amina, Lero, Yellow, Savatri, K, Okeagi, Omne, Marti, Kenny, K, Kenso, Seon, Astone, On, 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 so Kiria Flogi son of in a small or a small or a simetania con ever going PS moon. This was been naughty. I mean, as a shopy. Or did anyone antiquating similar antiquating can never and won't they talk that he come up your own of his monopy and my shiny mean or makes really pray thankfully our father who hearts in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, the kingdom come, that will be done. There's an heaven gives us their daily bread and forgives us passing for those passing and still doesn't take me to lose them. Catch us out of the lines, keep around, go to favor. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So we're going to continue today with our Bible study of the book of Genesis. And I think what might be most beneficial is uh, traditionally, like you would read what we're going to talk about and then we talk about it, but I think it makes a bit more sense because this is a bit different in the way that we're like explaining things, that you can read it after. So this uh, Bible study today is going to cover um, the story of Noah's Ark, and we're going to cover the Tower of Babel, and then we're going to cover uh, 
the meeting between Abraham and Melki Sadiq. Um, and the reason these parts were chosen is because of how they point to Christ. Um, when we're reading the Old Testament, sometimes we get lost in all of the words and all of the things that are being said. But what's nice about this uh, commentary done by, like I said last week, St. Cyril, is that he's pointing specifically to Christ in the figures of the Old Testament. And his writing is deep and complex. And so what's also nice is that you have someone that's willing to go through it and kind of like explain it in a way that would make sense to us um, so that you don't have to spend hours and hours reading it also. Um, so the story of Noah's Ark, we all know, but the depth of it, sometimes we don't actually get. So let's start. As the story goes, Noah, as you all know, was a good man and a genuine lover of God, by the way. Most of the time, the words that I'm saying are not my words, they're St. Cyril's words. Um, so I think it's important for you guys to understand that I'm sometimes going to expound on it, but I'm really trying to follow very specifically um, his ideas and what he says so that we can benefit from one of the great church fathers that we never got a chance to like learn from. So when I'm speaking here, these are St. Cyril's words, or the Bible's, but not mine. Uh, good man and a genuine lover of God in the highest degree, putting his own virtuous conduct before all else. Uh, Lamech was Noah's father and he named him Noah. Noah means rest. And that's going to give us a beautiful example of what this story is in just a second here. Um, the Genesis chapter 5 says, and he called his name Noah, saying, kind of like how Zacharias prophesied about how great John would be, that he would be a forerunner to the Most High. Lamech prophesied about Noah and what he would be. And he said, this one will comfort us concerning our work and the toll of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. So it was kind of a precursor of what he was going to do. Um, and I'll read you now the section that we're going to talk about. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and the daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. As you're listening to this, you must remember that what we talked about yesterday was the new, uh, or last week, was the newness in Christ, and that we're now the new man or the new woman. The new man or the new woman is different from the old man. And so you see here that, that God saw the men on earth and he said, they're just flesh, but we now have been given the spirit of God. It's the New Testament, a new thing, a new spirit. Uh, they were, there were big giants on earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Again, what's incredible about reading this now is you can kind of say, like you can't look at today's world and be like, okay, good, now it's different, now it's much better. The same thing still applies. Um, hopefully there's more than one righteous man still living on earth though. Um, and then continuing, for all, St. John in his epistles, chapter two, verse 16 said, for all that is in the world, the lusts of the flesh, the lusts of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Part of our uh, understanding and what we have to know, and this is, this is I guess, my words now. Um, from the beginning, there was like a difference from the people of the world and the people of God. Even here, you see that um, uh, Moses, when he wrote this, he differentiated between the children of God or the sons of God and the sons of men. And I'll explain that here in a second. 
But even now in the world, there's always been this idea of like, we separate ourselves from the world. The, the great like sort of sadness of America, for instance, is that it was supposedly built as like a Christian country. And so we felt safe being part of like this Christian um, uh, culture. But even this out of over time has become degraded so much that when we step out of the safety of this church, we're stepping back into this world that was so abhorrent to God before. And that same world was a world that God said, you guys stay in here, like stay in this church. I'll give you a hint of what's coming. This church is in the shape of an ark. So, and the wood of it reminds us of the ark. And so the, the ark is, like, the connection is that the ark became the church, the safety of people. And so I was just telling a couple, a couple of minutes ago, the idea is when we go into the church, it's like a ref, respite, a respite from the outside world. It's like a safety place. And we'll see that coming in right now. And so even St. John in the New Testament talks about, like, the world is one thing, but we're something else. We're not part of the world. The world is different. The world does things different. And we don't have to assimilate in that same culture, that same style, and that same sin. In fact, we're taught to not assimilate to it. Um, frankly, we're constantly distracted by these pleasures of the flesh. From the food that we eat, the, the drinks that we drink, the music that we listen to, um, the, the images that we see, the shows and the movies that we watch, all of those things draw us away from God and bring us into the culture of the earth. This is the same earth, and maybe even more so, that was rejected by God during the time of Noah. And so we have to, as children of God, protect ourselves to a certain extent and protect our children so that we're not uh, letting them run free in this world that is slowly becoming more evil and more dangerous um, and more taking us away from what we need and what we love. So the teaching is, this is St. Cyril now teaching, the sons of God were the descendants of Seth. Remember I talked about Cain and Abel last week, and when Cain killed Abel, uh, Cain was, put, God put a mark on Cain to protect him, but he separated from, from God, Cholus, and he went on his own. They became the sons of men. And then Seth was born from Adam and Eve, and then his sons and daughters became the children of God. And slowly what happened is that the children of God um, found the, the children of men or the sons of men, and they wanted to procreate with them instead of procreate with each other. And so it began the disintegration or the degradation of the human nature again. Whereas before it was clear that the sons of God were one way and the sons of men were another way, when they came together, they created these, what the Bible calls like giants. They were like ugly men that just cared about strength and anger and jealousy and murder. They didn't care about the things that were of God's. Um, St. Cyril says, the descendants of this unholy union were giants or savages of great physical strength, afflicted with an extremely ugly appearance and possessing bodies of greater size than others. They gave themselves to the world and profaned themselves. So again, even in the Old Testament example, when the sons of God assimilate with the sons of men, it is a degradation and destruction. The same thing happens now. When we allow ourselves to become part of the culture of the outside world, it slowly degrades us. Maybe not in the first generation, maybe not in the second generation, but perhaps in future generations, if we don't keep what is ours safe and we protect them in Christ's bosom, it will happen the same thing. Imagine four generations after you, if they're going to be here in church listening, like you are here in church listening. Hopefully, of course. Um, note that God determined to blot out every human being, but since Noah was adorned with a devout character, he had regard for him alone and would not destroy him with the rest, but would save all of his family. So the, the antithesis of evil is righteousness, obviously. And so if you, even in a cold, scary, dangerous, evil world, are righteous and live in Christ and follow in him and pray and fast and read his words and focus on him 
and are protected by his church, his ark, that's now, then God will show favor in that sense. Righteousness overcomes evil. Uh, I'll read again from Genesis chapter 6, verse 13. It says, And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark and shall finish it to a cubit from above and set the door of the ark on its side. You shall make it lower second and third decks. So even within this, St. Cyril says that this, uh, the measurements of the ark are a symbol of the Trinity. I thought it was kind of hard to explain and hard to like, but I'm telling you that he said that this is a symbol of the Trinity. And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh which, in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And every living thing of all flesh you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds of, of their kind, of animals after their kind, and of every creeping thing on earth after its kind. Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive, and you shall take for yourself of all the food that is eaten, and shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. So what's beautiful about this passage is this idea that like even though God was going to destroy everything on the earth, the things which were good and stayed good, he of course wanted to save and he wouldn't destroy them. So he brought of every little animal, even they say, even the, the Bible says the critters, like the insects, everything that was good in the sight of God, he saved, he brought into the ark so that they could continue. But the ones that were evil were destroyed. Again, it is symbolic of what's to come we will all be judged one day. And the ones that are evil will have their way, but the ones that have become true sons and daughters of Christ will be put in his presence and filled with his heavenly glory. And Noah did according to all that God had commanded him, so he did. After this, God fulfilled his promise and all the flesh drowned, but the ark floated with the souls of the righteous as its cargo. So imagine now that you're sitting here in the church and this church is actually in the form of an ark with its wood and its curvature here on the top. And you can imagine that this now is the new ark. The, the church has become the New Testament ark, the salvation from the outside world. No matter what you go through week to week, you offer repentance and you come into the church and now you're safe and you take of his body and his blood. Just like Noah took the animals and then fed them, Christ takes us, his sheep, brings us into his ark, which is the church, and then feeds us of his body and his blood, so that even though we're in the midst of men and evil, we're protected and safe. So the church now has become our safety and our salvation. Um, and as we said that Noah's name means rest, he is symbolic of this Christ's rest that he did when he established the church for us. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, it's a beautiful verse. He says, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is the rest right here in the church. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely, lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So even though the outside world is terrible and hard and full of strife and stress and bad things, when we come into his rest, into the church, we are given what's called respite or a respite. Like, uh, you know, when like you go underwater for a long time and then you can't, you're holding your breath to one so that you can survive. And then when you finally come out of the water, you take that first breath and it like fills you with joy and it like releases almost like this happiness inside of you because you've survived. The church is like that. When we enter into the church, it's like taking our breath again and living again with Christ. All right, there's more verses. Um, 
to remind us of the church as the rest. Zephaniah, the prophet Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 16 says, In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion. Let not your hands be weak. The Lord your God is in your midst. The Mighty One will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. This is the church. This is the protection. This is what we're yearning for. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 3 says, Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are full-hearted, Be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, and with recompense of God, He will come and save you. Again, these are prophecies of the church and the salvation that we have in Christ and His life-giving cross. Christ, uh, and then Christ then, St. Cyril now says, has become our righteousness and our rest, and has also saved us from the earth which the Lord God cursed. So the church also becomes a salvation for us in Christ. So you literally experience that when you come on Sunday and you hear his word and you take of his body and his blood. That fills us with the rest that we need, that breath of fresh air to go back into the world but not as like people just living amongst people. The difference now is that since God gave us grace, when we go out into the world, he said, you now are lights in the world. And so instead of being like, oh, I'm scared of everything, this world is really terrible, it's the opposite. You become lights and you change the nature of others. When they see in you this light, they say, this is different than what I'm experiencing. What's this light? I want to do what you're doing. Many times people have said to me, like at work, for instance, uh, like, what's your deal? Why are you going to church? Where are you going? Why are you fasting? That is our experience and our chance to show them this light, to share with them. So as not to say, I'm, I'm from Christ, so I reject the world. No, we're called to bring everyone else into this same church. It's um, if you love something and you find it beautiful, you share it with others. It's as simple as that. The, St. Cyril says the children of Israel had also become corrupt through their union with those who were inferior as far as their character and their different disposition and customs are concerned, just like us. Like, for instance, like we get tattoos, but we get them on our right hand, a small cross tattoo. The culture here gets tattoos all over everywhere. And people always come to me like, Abuna, can I get a tattoo? And I don't know how to answer that, but that's not our culture. We don't have tattoos. We don't think about tattoos. We don't mark our bodies. We never do. We never have. And hopefully we never will. It's not so much that it's wrong, but when we assimilate with a culture, instead of giving them our culture, which we find superior because our culture is embedded and based in Christ, um, we take from their culture and, and begin to ruin our own. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and St. Cyril is saying this happened since the Israelites when they would leave their tribe and go and take, and take families and, and customs and gods from the other uh, heathen tribes around them. And since two, the nations had joined themselves to the one nation of Israel, the maker of all justly pronounced the destruction of all the nations that were upon the earth. But being overcome by his innate goodness, he did not vent his wrath in equal proportion to their sins, that the race of men upon earth should not perish entirely by means of Noah, he foreshadowed the justification that was by faith and the deliverance through water. So the last symbol of, the, of uh, the ark is this idea that through the water, which was killing everyone else, Noah and his family were saved. And then this is obviously a symbol of our baptism, which we receive, again, through water. Uh, St. Paul says when we're baptized, we are crucified with him in the water, and then we rise up, and are resurrected with him when we come out of the water, new men or new women. Um, the only begotten son, St. Cyril says, became a man and lived among men, he being the true Noah. Furthermore, he constructed the church into which those rush, those rush who flee the destruction stored up for the world. St. Peter says in his epistle, chapter three, verse 20, when once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through water. There is also an anti-type which now saves us, baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, 
the angels and the authorities and the powers having been made subject to him. What about the measurements of the ark? Remember I spoke about the measurements and, and I said that St. Cyril said that uh, this is symbolic of the Trinity, but he also gave us a beautiful verse. It's from Ephesians chapter three. Remember God measured the width, the length, and the height. Now see what St. Paul says in Ephesians. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. You've been given the spirit of God, and that strengthens you. That's a great gift. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. So here, uh, St. Paul connects like God measuring the ark to his love for us. And it's very true. His love for us caused him to come down, become man, and die for our sake, and give us the gift of baptism, so that when we rise up out of the water, we're filled with his spirit. And then we, can, can, we literally become true sons and daughters. Like we attain, the Bible says we attain sonship. Like, we're made his sons and daughters. Not his friends, not his creation, not things that he made, but his sons and daughters. Just like um, if someone was the son of a king, he's the son of the king. That's a great thing. He's a prince. And we too have that same thing in us. We're sons and daughters of Christ. Uh, continuing in Genesis, after they came out of the ark, but then God spoke to Noah saying, go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and cattle and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and may be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every animal, every creeping thing, every bird, and whatever creeps on the earth, according to their families, went out of the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered a burnt offering on the altar. And the Lord smelled the soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. So when, and St. Cyril now explaining this, so when Christ became our high priest, and through him we were offered spiritually as a pleasing aroma to God and the Father, we were then counted worthy of his abundant favor, and we have sure foundation that death would no longer have power over us. So again, Noah is a type of Christ, and the ark is a symbol of the church and of our baptisms that we received. Again, everything in the Old Testament is pointing to the New Testament. All right, the next thing that we'll talk about really quickly here in the next five or ten minutes is the Tower of Babel. Um, I'll go through it quickly. You all know the story that the... Uh, the people on the earth decided that they wanted to use bricks and built a tower high enough so that it can reach heaven. And God thought that was so silly because they were never going to be able to reach heaven in that way. That wasn't going to be the way that we were going to reach heaven. And so St. Cyril says, while the God of all reproved their endeavors, he did not do so out. So I'm sorry, the story goes that he made, he, even though they all spoke one language at the time, he confused them by making them all speak different languages. And when they were all speaking different languages, they could no longer partake in this building of this uh, tower that was going to get them to heaven. And now hear the explanation. This is what St. Cyril says about why God did that. Because it's a strange thing, right? While the God of all reproved their endeavors, reproved means like he didn't want them to do it. He did not do so out of feet that they might complete their work. He, didn't, he wasn't worried that they were gonna like reach up to him, obviously. Rather, because they were planning something excessive in his innate kindness, he brought their undertaking to eventual end by making them speak many languages. And in doing so, he is showing that in his oversight of humankind, if they get carried away somewhat by observed undertakings, he does not let them go unreproved. He is a savior in every way and in every form. And everything that man does wrong, he fixes and makes it right. How did he make the Tower of Babel right? St. Cyril compares their folly to the Jews who suppose they can make for themselves a relationship with God. Remember, uh, in the New Testament, the Sadducees and the Pharisees 
were doing everything by the book and perfectly, and they thought that was good enough. Just like these men thought, if we just build this, this tower, we'll get up to heaven, obviously. But the Lord God is spirit, and we must worship him in spirit and truth. And so he must fix that. How? Not by doing what pleased God, but by simply citing the name of Abraham. So they would just say, like, we're sons of Abraham. Remember how I talked about it last week? Or we're sons of David. Um, that is why we're allowed to be part of God's people. Because they tried to reach God not by pleasing him, but by earthly things. He scattered them abroad and made them speak different languages. But in Christ, speaking different languages became a good sign. When? If you remember, in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Then the day of Pentecost had fully come, and they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they appeared to him divided tongues of fire, and one sat upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with their tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Spirit was conveying the way upwards, it's St. Cyril says, the ascension into the heaven through faith in Christ. In every language spoken on the earth, but peoples and nations united one in one gathering in the Spirit. For every tongue among the people was confessing Christ and speaking his mysteries. So in the Old Testament, God separates the people through language. But in the New Testament, he brings them back together in one language, where the apostles, when they would speak, everyone would hear them in their own language because he's once again uniting them in Christ so here, we have mostly Egyptians probably sitting here, but the United Church of Christ is full of all denominations and all people, and they all sit and, par and praise him and, and hopefully take of his body and his blood in his protection in his church. All right, the last thing is Abraham and Melchizedek. Um, as you all know, Melchizedek, I'll, I'll read the story. Uh, so what happened was Abraham, uh, from the beginning, God told Abraham, he appeared to him, or he heard a voice, and God said, leave your place where you are at, even though Abraham was very successful and had a lot of stuff, and he was happy where he was sitting. God said, leave this place and go over there to Canaan. I give it to you. So Abraham, because he uh, obeyed God, he gathered all his stuff and went to this new place. And God blessed him so much, and he grew so much. He also had a nephew named Lot. And Lot was also there and also reaping the benefit of this blessing. And what happened was Abraham and Lot's people started fighting a little bit. They were like getting so big. So Abraham went to Lot and said, Habibi, why don't you go somewhere else so that we stop fighting, like our people stop fighting. And Lot was like, okay, where do you want, where do you want me to go? And, and Abraham like kind of like looked over the, the, the valley and he said, you can go wherever you want. Abraham gave Lot the choice. And Lot saw like this area where there was a city called Sodom and Gomorrah, and it was beautiful and green and full of valleys. So Lot went that way and Abraham went the other way. And what happened was over time, this area that Lot had taken had become uh, uh, taken captive by these kings and these tribes. So the men that were with Lot ran to Abraham's side and said, come save us, we've been taken captive by these kings. So Abraham gathered all his people and his soldiers and went and saved Lot and brought him back. And as he's coming back, he meets this man. I'll read you the story. Uh, so he brought back all the goods and also brought back, with his, back his brother Lot and all his goods, as well as the women and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is the king's valley, after his return from the defeat of Sheromander and the kings who were with him. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine he was a priest of, the most, of God Most High, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. So the story goes that as he's going back, he meets this king of Salem, like king of righteousness or king of peace. Salem is Jerusalem. That was like the short name before it became Jerusalem. And so Melchizedek was king of that place. And oddly enough, he was also a priest. Before there were any priests, he was a priest of God. And so from the beginning, the fathers pointed this person as this is obviously someone that is uh, pointing towards Christ, right? And so if you actually read the commentaries 
Uh, St. Cyril goes into great depth um, explaining that he's not God, but he points to Christ. Um, and I'll tell you a little story here at the end. But uh, I'll explain it. Melchizedek, he is the king of Salem, the king of righteousness and peace. In him we have been justified, having rid ourselves from the burden of sin. So like Melchizedek was a king of peace, Christ is a king of peace who rid us from sin. We also have peace with God the Father, having washed off the impurity of our ways that divided us and kept us apart, being united as it were to him through the Spirit. Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Melki means obviously king, and Sedek means righteousness. So he's the king of righteousness, and he's also king of Salem, which is Salem, which is also peace. He took up the symbols of the priesthood that we use now that excels the law, offering Abraham both wine and bread when he blessed him. So again, it points to not the priesthood that was to come in the Levites. Ironically, Abraham is standing there. In his loins are the Levites that would come because he is the father of all those nations. But before, he, they were even cre before Eli, Levi was even born, and then his sons that would become the priests of the nation of, uh, of Israel, there was this uh, king and this priest. And St. Paul refers to Melchizedek as a priest without genealogy, not because he like, doesn't have parents, because he probably did, but because it doesn't explain in the scripture where he came from or what he was doing or who he was. It just says that this man showed up and he was a priest of the Most High God. So it also points to Christ, who uh, took flesh and became man, not through parents, but because he was the Son of God and became our chief high priest. Um, St. Paul also connects Melchizedek to Christ in that scripture didn't express his genealogy or where he came from, taking this as a figure of the glory of Emmanuel and as an account of relating to the very matters of the divine economy. Uh, so Melchizedek became, again, a type of Christ in three ways, in that he was the king of peace, that he was a great high priest, and God, uh, Christ, who shed his blood for us, became our great high priest, establishing our church. And in our church, we offer to him uh, bread and wine, and he transforms it to his body and his blood that we take, and we're filled with it um, as the days and weeks go by. Um, the last thing I'll say is this funny story. So, uh, like I said, St. Cyril was like very angry about anyone that was saying because he was a patriarch and he was very protective of, uh, of like the right thing. So literally there's like, if you read this, there's pages and pages and pages of him explaining that he's not God. Mephisodic was not an angel or a spirit or God. He was a type of Christ. Um, the story goes that there was an old monk living um, by himself and he was a very holy man. And St. Cyril had heard that this monk was teaching that um, Melchizedek was a, uh, a god, or not a god, but the spirit of God. He wasn't just a man. So St. Cyril wrote to him and he said, oh, blessed man, uh, I need help with something. Because he knew that he was a holy man. He said, can you please tell me if Melchizedek was a man or was he the spirit of God? And so since this holy man was a holy man, even though he, he thought he knew the answer, he said, all right, I'll pray about it for three days and I'll get back to you. And then, so what happens was that this man prays about it, this monk, and then he has a dream. And in his dream, he sees the genealogy of every single man and notices one of the men is this Melchizedek. He sees his parents and his parents and his parents and his parents. And so he writes back to St. Cyril and says, Melchizedek is a man. So you can see the, like, uh, the genuineness and the humbleness of St. Cyril, not to just like push this man down that was like teaching what he thought was a false teaching, but encouraging him to seek the truth. And I guess it's a good reminder for us too. Like when we want to know something, Christ is willing to tell us the answer. We just have to seek out and find it. And when we do, he gives us what we're looking for. So if you guys start to read the Bible and seek out the answers, God will fill you with the knowledge required for you to understand. I know a lot of us say, like, I don't understand what I'm reading. But if you keep at it and you keep doing it, God will fill you with that knowledge. All right, so we're now, that was chapters 6 to 14. For next week, we're going to go over Abraham and Isaac. 
and that's going to be a lot, we're going to read, we're, like, if you want to read beforehand, you'd read the Genesis from chapter 15 to chapter 27. I know it sounds like a lot, but the chapters are actually quite short, and the story is so interesting and so beautiful, I think you guys will like it. Uh, may God bless you and, and bless your reading of his word, and glory be to our God forever. Amen. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your great mercy, and according to the multitude of your compassion, we brought up my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I'm conscious of my iniquity, and my sin is at all times before me, against you only by sin and done evil before you, that you may be unjust, and you speak, and might overcome when you are judged. Behold, I have brought forth in iniquities and sins, my mother conceived me. Behold, you have desired truth, and in manifest things you have made me. You shall sprinkle me with your hyssop, and I shall be clean. You shall wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. You shall make me your gladness and joy. The humbled bones shall rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins. I have blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and a right spirit in my inward parts. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not remove your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a directing spirit. Then I shall teach transgressors your ways and then godly men shall turn to you. Deliver me from blood, O God, the God of my salvation. My tongue shall rejoice in your righteousness. O Lord, you shall open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. For if you desired sacrifice, I would have given it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and humbled heart God shall not despise. Do good, O Lord, your good pleasure in design. Let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then you shall be pleased with sacrifice of righteousness, offering and burnt sacrifice. Then they shall offer cows upon your altar. Hallelujah. Arise, O you children of the light. Praise the Lord of hosts that he may grant the salvation of our souls when we stand in the flesh before you. Take away from our minds sleep of forgetfulness. Grant us alertness, O Lord, in order that we may understand how to stand up before you at the time of prayer and send up to you the appropriate doxology and win the forgiveness of our many sins. Glory to you, O lover of mankind. Behold, bless the Lord, O you the servants of the Lord, who stand in the house of the Lord in the course of the house of our God. In the nights lift up your hands, O you saints, and bless the Lord. The Lord shall bless you out of Zion, who made heaven and earth. Glory to you, O lover of mankind. Let my supplication come near before you, Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my petition come before you, revive me according to your word. Let my lips flow with praise when you have taught me your ordinances. Let my tongue speak of your words, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand be for saving me, for I have desired your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my meditation. My soul shall live in praise you, and your judgment shall help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the age of all ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, from now and to the age of all ages. Amen. Glory be to you, O the good one, lover of mankind. Hail to your mother, the virgin, to all your saints. Glory be to you, O holy Trinity, have mercy upon us. Let God arise, and let all his enemies be scattered, and let all those who hate his holy name flee from before his face. But let your people be in blessing, thousand, thousand, ten thousand times, and thousand, doing your will. O Lord, you shall open my lips, and I shall declare your praise. Amen. Alleluia. <laughs> the first watch of the blessed midnight hour, offered for Christ our God, I have him to forgive us our sins. In the Psalms of our Father, David, the prophet, and the king, may his blessings rest upon us. Amen. Simon, holy, 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 the gospel according to St. Matthew. May his blessing rest upon us. Amen. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be like to the virgins, took their lambs, and, five, and with fourteen men by a groom. Five for them were wise, and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lambs, took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. So while the bridegroom was delayed, they all summered and slept. But now there was a cry made Behold, the bridegroom is coming, arise and go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs, and the foolish said unto the wise, there was silver oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No less, there should not be enough for us and you. But rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. 
While they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready and went, went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I do not know you. Watch your for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Glory be to God for every man, sing God for peace and shame over the souls, and make good not those in the mouth of web. Jerky exotium and right on, behold, the bridegroom is coming at midnight, but the servant of him finds watching. But he whom he finds sleeping is unworthy of going in with him. Therefore, take heed of my soul, that you may not fall into a deep sleep and be cast out of the kingdom. I watch crowds saying, Holy, holy, holy are you, O God, for the sake of Theotokos, have mercy on us. Let my soul be mindful at all, some day and wake up and light your lamp with oil, joy, if you do not know when the voice will call upon you, saying, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, so take heed, my soul, not to fall asleep, lest you stand outside knocking like the five foolish virgins, but watch entreating that you may meet Christ the Lord with the rich oil. And he may grant you the wedding, this true and heavenly glory. You are the rampart of our salvation with the Atokas, the virgin, the mighty, and pregnant fortress. Abolish the counsel of the adversaries and transform the sorrow of your servants into joy. Fortify our city, defend our kings, and intercede for the peace of the world. For you are all both the Atokas. O oh, heavenly King, the comfort of the Spirit of Truth, who is present in all places and fills all the treasury of good things and life giver, graciously come and dwell within us and purify us from all the fallen of good women and save our souls. Just as you are with your disciples, the Savior, and gave them peace, graciously come also and be with us and grant us your peace and save us and deliver our souls. Whenever we stand in your holy sanctuary, we are considered standing in heaven. O Theotokos, you are the gate of heaven, open for us the gate of mercy. Holy, 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 holy Lord, of heaven, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory and honor. Have mercy on us, O God, the Father, the Pontus Caritor, holy your name, mercy upon us. O Lord, for God of hosts, be with us. Fear no help in our hardships and tribulations, but you. Absolve, forgive, remit, O God, our transgressors. Those who committed willingly and those who committed unwillingly. Those who committed knowingly and those who committed unknowingly. They hid in the manifest. Lord, forgive us for the sake of the holy name which is called upon us. Let me come to your mercy, Lord, and of course. Mercy, Lord, rather pay thanks, Lord. Father, Father, Lord, 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 be in thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Amen. 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 Give us today our daily bread. Let us just now forgive us. Let us have a taste of the Lord. Choice in the name of the Lord, and 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 the Lord, So I'll see what those holy, 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 holy are reading from the Gospel according to our teacher, St. Luke. May the blessing be upon us, holy men. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went up unto the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat to, sat, sat to eat in the Pharisee's house, bought an, bought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears and wiped them wiped them with, with the hairs of her head 
and kissed, the, kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is who touched him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he said it, Master, say it. And he said, Master, say it. There was a certain con cre creditor who had two de debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when he had, he had nothing to pay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me which, were, tell me where, therefore, which of them will, will I love more? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave more. And he said unto him, you have rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, do you see this woman? I entered into your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman, this woman since the time I came has not ceased to kiss my feet, my head with oil, but you did not anoint. But this woman has anointed my feet with the ointment. Therefore I say unto you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she is loved much, but, but to whom little is forgiven, and the same loves little. And he said unto her, your sins are forgiven. And those who sat down to eat with him began to say within themselves, who is this, who is this forgives sins also? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Glory be to God for every man who sings to God, build peace. And Oshmer is toast to me, God, not toast to I, Jack, he exo timon and on. Give me, O Lord, many fountains of tears as you gave in the past the sinful woman. Make me worthy to wash your feet, which liberated me, which liberated me from the path of straying. To offer your precious fragrant oil and gain through the repentance of your life, so that might, that I may, may hear that voice full of joy. Your faith has saved you. When I realize my many wicked deeds and the thought of that awesome judgment comes to my heart, it tremble takes hold of me and I take refuge in you, O God, the lover of mankind. So do not turn away your face from me, I entreat you, alone without sin. Grant humbleness to my poor soul before then comes and save me. The heavens bless you, O full of grace, the bride who was never married, and we too glorify your incomprehensible giving birth. O Theotokos, the mother of mercy and salvation, intercede for the salvation of our souls. عزي روح الحق الحاضر في كل مكان والمال الكل كنز الصالحات ومعت الحياة قالوا ما تفضل روح اللي فينا وطهرنا من كل دنس أيها الصالة وخلص نفسنا سبت ريك أيوك يا عجي أمن ماتي كما كنت مع تلاميذك يا المخلص وعطيتهم السلام هل أم وعيدا كما أنا ومنحنا سلامك وخلصنا ونجي نفسنا كيني كاي كاستو سيون استو نيون نامين إذا ما وقفنا في هيكلك المقدس نحسب كالقيام في السماء يا والدة الإله أنت يا باب السماء افتح لنا باب الرحمة Holy God, Holy Mary, Holy Mother, born the Virgin Mary, son us. Holy God, Holy Mary, Holy Mother, excuse for our first Mary, son us. Holy God, Holy Mary, Holy Mother, was in the dead of the Mary, son us. Glory be to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord, forgive us our sins. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms. Provide yourselves money bags which shall not grow old. A treasure in the heavens does not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth corrupts. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let your lines be girded and your lamps burning. And you yourselves be like men who wait for their masters when he will turn from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open from him to him immediately. But are those servants whom their master, when he comes, will find them watching. Assuredly, I say to you, that he shall gird himself and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. And he shall, and he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so. But are those servants, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, 
He would have watch and not have allowed his house to be broken into. You therefore be ready also, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think. Then Peter said to him, Lord, do you speak this parable only to us or to all people? And the Lord said, Who then is faithful and wise steward, whom his master will make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of food in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his master, when he comes, will find them so doing. Truly I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if the servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and he begins to beat the men's servants and maidens, and to eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come in a day when he is not looking for him, at an hour when he is not aware, and he will cut him in two and appoint his portion with the unbelievers. Through compassion I, O Lord, look at my weakness, for surely my life will end, and in my deeds I shall have no, no salvation. Therefore I beseech you, O Lord of the merciful I, Look at my weakness, my humility, my poverty, and my sojourn, and save me. As the judge is present, take heed, O my soul. Awake and consider that awesome hour. For the day of judgment there will be no mercy on those who are not merciful. Therefore have compassion on me, O Savior. For you are, for you alone are the lover of mankind. O oh, the reasonable gate of gate of life, the honored Theotokos, deliver from hardships those who in faith take refuge in you, so that we might glorify your immaculate birth of Christ for the salvation of our souls. O oh, the King, the Comfort, the Spirit of Truth, who is present in all places, fills all the treasury of good things, and the life giver graciously come also and be with us and grant come and dwell in us and purify us from all defilement and go and save our souls. <laughs> Just as you were with your disciples, the Savior, and gave them peace, graciously come also and be with us and grant us your peace and save us and deliver our souls. <laughs> Whenever we stand in your holy sanctuary, we are considered standing in heaven. O Theotokos, you are the gate of heaven, open for us the gate of mercy. Lord, hear us and have mercy on us and forgive us our sins. Amen. Holy, holy, Lord of Sabaoth, heaven and earth, before we learn honor, have mercy on us, O God, the Father, upon the Torah, Holy Trinity, mercy on us, Holy God, our host, you are those, fear not, harp on our hearts, and relations with you, is all forgiven, and may, O God, our transgressions, those who commit willingly, and those who commit unwillingly. Those who in knowingly and those who in unknowingly and hidden and manifest, so Lord, forgive us our sins for the sake of your holy name, which is called upon us. Let it be according to mercy, O Lord, and according to our sins. Our Father, and words in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespass. Those who trespass against us, least limitation, deliver us from the flesh of self, the friends, and found both of Master of Jesus Christ, the living and eternal Son of God, enlighten our minds to understand your life giving words. Raise those up from. Trims the soul. Make us worthy to become upright in good deeds. At the time of your coming to judge the world, make us worthy of hearing that voice full of joy, saying, Come to me, you blessed are my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Yes, Lord, grant us in that hour to be without fear, anxiety, or condemnation, and do not judge us according to our many iniquities. For you alone are compassionate, and long-suffering, and exceedingly merciful. We ask this through the intercession of Our Lady, the Theotokos, St. Mary, the intercession of all the Christ. Have mercy on us, O oh God, have mercy on us, who at all times and every hour in heaven and earth is worshiping glorified. Christ our God, the good, the long suffering, the abundant in mercy and great compassion, who loves the righteous and mercy on the sinners whom I am chief, who does not wish the death of the sinner bride that he returns and lives, who calls all salvation with the promises of the good things to come. Lord, receive from us our prayers in this hour and every hour. Use our life and guide us to fulfill your commandments. Sanctify our spirits, cleanse our bodies, connect our thoughts, purify our intentions, forgive us our sins, deliver us from every grief and distress of heart. Surround us by our holy angels, and by the camp, we be guarded and guided in glory. Faith and knowledge of steps, one infinite glory, fear of us forever. Amen. Father, Lord, and heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.
هللويا كريا ليسون كريا ليسون كريا ليسون توت أبوس إنجيل مايسيس نم نشير بسعيد تايودنت بشوسو أبوس أتوجج مارن حسب شوي شيخ نوو غرابيشيو أوس بون مرشاسي دوار بفرو إكم أبوس حسن مرشاس بولي Fene pasha in tepeko, akum chemin ni eti o vin, ako orb em pengon tup umo u, em evriti en hanro o ui. Te voli te em pengon a man te pengon von a poi rat in jepe mo, a fe chis in jemo, em evriti en o sot, a ve chos in jeni gol, en de miti em e fion. A fos gar in jepe ga jijeti na chogi en ta tau en ta fos en an chol en ta tse en ta psik en ta chutep, chen ta sif en te ta jiger shois. Nimet on yom mok, ni not yep shoyz. Nimet on yom mok, e afti on nak. Niet ba wab en tag ve erish viri, em mok en o e kiri en han esh viri. Afsot em je hanet no so of kont han nak i avici niet shob chen ne felestim. A vole volen jeo ni ven shub khen kanan av i eri ego un jeo ster ter nemo o hoti Ani to akon to go i jen o to en te kliru no meia ne me khone pek man shob i estep to fa e ta ge rofe rofe ep shoiz Je avi e kon e vio min je i thrun de fraun e m t'i v t'i o mz neme v chas i e tho Ap kjo sen pi mo an te vio meri e kon e shqi pisar e mo shi khen pe qo khen e n miti e me fion Ase gje gje nas m gje mari e m t'i e profetis t'i son in dar o n e m pi kem kem khen nek jik O avi e bod sa min isip ni e u mi t'i ro khen ham kem kem ne ma han hoz Ase gje ma o n gje mari e m e z go e mo gje mari na O e tho ne mo chasi e tho a ver voro e me vio Je mare no o sef choj shekhen o u gara vechi o u Oh.
Sonny and a 
كل ركبة تجثو أمامك يا رب يسوع أعيني كل الألسنة معا تبارك اسمك يا رب يسوع مسيح يا إلهي أعيني Turn away your face from all my sins my Lord Jesus Your Holy Spirit, do not take away from me, my Lord Jesus, help me. Ja, 
Sons, we that hide away, we have to your table, kiss the web and the British in Uru. He gave us a jump in some of the sons and even there to stop me, you're sending holy. They foretold the sign of God, the word who became man without separation. Why, we're here, it's not the only thing to you to also as all you're not talking about, say your name of you. Holy man, and TV, God, and we're not seeing the social and the first word to my own. The head of his cheese and the heat, the other hands on it, after us, Kata, I hope to see his name. I will leave his name, she said, I'm just not a good one. And the hunt and the head is as they have night, and never is very end of the mighty room. Some had an impaling in me, and impatience is not in him back and seen on. They made an art of Buddha and not decay, but we live with gold within. They got Hegari, Haymari, and a bag in the moat, the dots were known to suck on them. Savon, many people through your purity, as we want to see a moss, and you can hunt him, nor do I am a prophet. He goes, Then they hold on top, Heather and Chasney. I am not a hidden never as we end up in my room. I am a sister of a child of a love for sure being from all sides. I am not a child of 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 a child of
Entevare emot naren pingo evor entenen novi enten jasni evnai hiten ne perezbeya. Shabbat shalom. 